Today, I'm going to be continuing on to part two of the word from last week, which was navigating relationships with believers. So what is happening this past week, also even this past Wednesday and the previous Wednesday, is growth in the spiritual realm, wisdom being released to know how to navigate relationships with believers so that the enemy can't come in through any sneaky way, through any open door. Amen? Hallelujah. So I shared last Sunday that it's important to know that the roles we have as believers are not the same. And in the old wine, so many believe that all of our roles are the same. We have the same Holy Spirit, yes, but we have different callings. We have different responsibilities. We have different graces. We have different anointings. We have different levels of authority different things that God's called us to. And to do something that God has not called us to do is out of God's will and is dangerous. So, for example, the fivefold ministry that's talked about in Ephesians 4, it says God gave, Jesus gave to the church gifts. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. So some, meaning not all or even most, but some. And to summarize this passage in Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, it shares that these offices of ministry were given to the church to equip the believers to bring maturity to them spiritually so that they would no longer be immature and easily deceived by wrong doctrines coming from the enemy. And that they would also be equipped to do works of God that God's calling them to do, the works they are called to do. Amen? So some of those works are healing the sick and casting out demons and speaking prophetically but doing it in order, not just whenever you want to, not just however way, not doing it in someone else's domain, like your spiritual leader's territory and domain, but doing it in order and as Holy Spirit's leading and what he's calling you to specifically. For example, yes, we are all supposed to be casting out demons. These are the signs that shall follow all believers, it says. But that doesn't mean that we are all supposed to be casting out demons every single day. For some of you, it might just be once in a great while as Holy Spirit leads, according to that, according to the situation. Amen. Whereas a fivefold minister, like an apostle, for example, like for me, I am supposed to be doing this every week, multiple times a week usually. But it's different, amen? So it's so important that when you look at your leader or when you look at the fivefold offices, that you're not thinking in your mind, I must be exactly like them in terms of their calling, <laughs> Or even, I want to do exactly what they're doing in their calling. You have to make sure that you are not placing yourself where God hasn't placed you. That's dangerous and out of order. Amen? So to recap from last week, I shared that uh, believers, so not fivefold, those who are not fivefold ministers, anointed and appointed by God, So everyone else, all other believers, they should not teach, counsel, prophesy, directional, and correct. Now, I'm going to elaborate a little more so you can know what I mean by this, by each one. Amen? All of these roles are the job of the fivefold ministers, and it's what they have the anointing and grace to do. 
So believers should not teach. So all believers, you can repeat teachings that you've learned from your leader. Like, technically, that's teaching, but you're not bringing something new. Even, even, even Paul said to, to the believers in, one, in, in, in different churches, he would say, I am sending Timothy to carry out my words, to share with you my words, and remind you my way of living, remind you my Christ-like way. So he's saying to the believers, don't imitate Timothy, imitate me, is what Paul's saying. So he's saying, Timothy, as my beloved's faithful spiritual son, is going to carry out my words, not bring something different. Amen? And so you should be teaching a lot in terms of sharing with people how Holy Spirit leads things you've learned, but not teaching your own things if you're not sent out to do this. Amen? There, there will come a time where God will lead me to anoint fivefold ministers here at Fivefold Church. Prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, other apostles. And then they will be anointed to teach. And so much of what they teach will be like how Timothy was carrying out the words of Paul. But they have been given a special authority that if God may sometimes give them a revelation in line with what the leader has taught. Not something different. It goes in line with it. But it may be a fresh revelation. That's the kind of new teaching that I'm, taking, te that I'm t sharing. That the believer's not called to. Only those that the leader has appointed and anointed with the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So here at Fivefold Church, as, I am, as we are laying the foundation, the Lord hasn't yet led me to anoint and appoint fivefold ministers here at Fivefold Church. The Lord has led me to anoint leadership roles, Chantal, Pastor Heather, but not yet anointing as fivefold ministers here at Fivefold Church. There will come that time, though, where it will be some services another fivefold minister will teach. And you can know, you can feel this is exactly the new wine food that God wants me to have that has come in order in line. Amen? Before that time comes, I want, I want you to know that you are nourished here. You're nourished well here with the food. By God's grace, God leads me to teach often, to teach meaty, long messages every Sunday that, that are jam-packed with meat, glory to God, as well as most, most times midweek. And I also do subscriber Q&As, which is pretty much another teaching, answering so many spiritual questions. And sometimes it's another time during the week as well if I'm ministering at an event. That's a lot of teachings. And every teaching you receive, if you hear, you know, when you, the reason why you take tests in school is because that's the, because you, if you just hear the teaching one time, there's no way you'll retain that. The, the, the point of the test is to get you to meditate on the teaching. That's the point of the test to get you to return to the teaching, meditate on the teaching, study the teaching, because that's when it will get inside you. So if you really want to grow, listen, just listening one time is not going to cut it. You'll grow a little bit, but God wants you to grow a lot. And so you need to study the word, especially because I'm not, for the most part, I'm not releasing things that you've heard again and again. It's new wine that you need. Amen? So you should be returning to that word. It's important you're not getting itchy ears to get some other kind of teachings because 
the biggest issue of that is that you're not focusing on the food that God has prepared for you that he knows you need. And he knows you need to meditate on it again and again and get it in you. So it's important that you focus where you are planted. Make sure you're staying focused there. Make sure you're getting the word in you there. Amen. So you can teach, but it should be repeating what you have heard. It can be in your own words a little bit. It doesn't have to be like repeating word for word, but don't be adding new things, different things, things from your old wine past. Amen. Um, and, and whenever you do that, it's so important also that you share where you received it from because the people that you're sharing it with need more. They need, they need the meat. They need the source. <laughs> they need to be planted and continually receive. So it's important you share where you received the teaching from, what you share, what the knowledge you're sharing with them, and encourage them to be planted and listen to the teachings. Amen. So counsel. There, will, there can be people in the church that come to you, friends that come to you asking you for advice on certain things. Now, you can give them advice for certain things that are basic, very basic things that you can humbly be confident in is the truth that you're sharing with them. Such as, maybe someone saying, I don't really feel like reading the Bible. I think that I don't really need to because I'm, I'm listening to only the teachings at 5F. So I don't think I really need to read the Bible at all. You, this is common knowledge. You can be confident in this, amen, that you can share with them. No, you need to also read the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, other things like um, maybe someone's just asking your advice. You know, there's these people that don't believe in God and they're inviting me to parties and they're going to be drinking and doing all these things here. I want to go because I have a crush on this guy. You know, and I, maybe I can just be the light. I can be the light. Don't, don't, don't you think I can be the light there? I think it's okay, right? What do you think? Now... Um, maybe not all of you, but I think most of you, and now remember, you got to be humbly, humble, humbly be confident, you know, not, not, not pridefully be confident, but if you really know the answer, the answer is no, that's dangerous. You're doing it because you have a crush on somebody. You shouldn't be unequally yoked and, and going to parties with unbelievers. No, you know, you can say that you can give that counsel. If it's things like this, but these are going to be more rare things, rare things, other types of advice you're not called to give. So many of you, most of you have come from old wine and you need to be aware of this and you need to humble yourself of that, of this advice that you're about to give somebody could actually be old wine or be old wine you're trying to mix with new wine. Maybe you've never encountered this scenario in the new wine, so you're just bringing your old wine advice to them. You know? So if you don't, if you with confidently are humble, and this isn't a basic thing, like should you read the Bible or not, it's better to not advise them. What you should instead do is say, go to, subscribe to Apostle Catherine and ask questions. Ask that question on the subscriber Q&A she does usually weekly. You can also email at info at 5fchurch.org with a question. I ask to be patient, though, because we don't have a huge team. to. We, we have people planted from 83 nations. Amen. So that's why you should make sure you go to the subscriber Q&As, ask the question there first, amen? Or if it's private, you can email, that's okay, but just be patient, it might not, we might not get back to you immediately, but trust God, if you're not know, knowing the answer yet, 
you can trust God that you don't need to know it quite yet. He'll reveal it in his perfect timing. Amen? Now, there could be some things that you, maybe at a subscriber Q&A, I go over, I answer practical, many practical questions. Many practical questions. So maybe you remembered that what my answer was to this specific question somebody has. And in that case, you can share with that person, but it's important you share, I'm giving you this advice because this is actually what I heard our leader share on the subscriber Q&A. And if possible, if you happen to remember, or maybe you can take a little time and go search, send the person that video where you found the answer. Amen? Um, and also, I'm going to be, in the near future, I'm going to be making a playlist on my YouTube channel that will ha have practical wisdom. Because there's so many answers, or questions I've answered on these subscriber Q&As. Questions about when, when your spouse isn't surrendered to God, what to do. Uh, questions on finances how to steward finances in different situations, um, different, different kinds of questions about boundaries and relationships. I, I answer so many practical things. So I'm going to make that playlist in the future, okay? So you can look there. You can go there, you know, for the, for the, um, for the question the person may have. Amen? Hallelujah. But, but overall, you need to know if someone might come to you for advice, slow down. You might, you, you might be stepping outside what God has called you to, and if you give them the wrong answer, you could direct, be directing them outside of God's will. So this is something serious, and you need to know it's a serious responsibility God's given you to keep your mouth shut when you're supposed to and direct them the right way. Direct them to the, 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 the leader of the church, their teachings, or to email leadership. Amen? So also, here, oh, here's another example. Fasting, by the way. I, I've done a teaching on fasting. We'll put that in the, the playlist. But it's also on the Revival Army training playlist. If you haven't seen that playlist, definitely watch it. It has so many important foundational teachings in the new wine that if you're planted here, it's so important you see all those videos. It's on my YouTube channel. Okay. But for example, fasting. The new wine revelation is so different from the old wine revelation. Just like in the time with Jesus, when Jesus talks about old wine versus new wine, he's sharing it in response to the question that, that, that the Pharisees are asking about Jesus. Why are you not fasting like us? And he's basically saying, I'm fasting in a new wine way. You're fasting in an old wine way. So someone can come to you asking about fasting and you give them the old wine answer. That's bad. Amen? So it's important you have this fear of God about this. So also correcting, you should not be correcting for the most part your fellow believers. Now, there are some cases where it, it, it is okay. James 5, 19 says, my brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this, whoever turns the sinner from their error of their way will save them from death and cover a multitude of sins. So there can be some circumstances where it's okay to correct, but for the most part, it's not because you're not given that authority over them to correct. Those who are given authority, like the leader, spiritual mother or father, that are given the authority to correct, they're given the anointing and grace to correct with love and gentleness and wisdom. Sometimes it's going slow, <laughs> Because God gives this wisdom that this person will be so hurt and so offended that they'll just drop it and they don't even want to listen. So God gives this perfect, beautiful wisdom to leaders. It's a special grace and anointing um, to correct what needs to be corrected in other things. It might not be necessary, but it's God's working on them. And, and the, the correction will come through the teachings. You know, it doesn't need to be like, you don't do this. 
sometimes when it's just not quite necessary. The person's just growing. It's not an issue of like a bad heart. It's just, it's just that the person needs to make the decision on their own to change and follow the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we, we don't want to rush and push that or it pushes them away. The kindness of God leads to repentance. Amen? So that's why for the most part, one should not be correcting because they're not given the grace for it if they are not the leader. And it, and it could do harm. Amen? Um, so here's some examples where correcting is, should be happening. Um, like, like, for example, if a, if a person is gossiping, speaking against the leadership, speaking against the, the church that you're a part of, but you're t a part of it together, but they're gossiping, this is a time where you can say, this is not okay to gossip. This is not okay to speak against our leader or the church. You know, this is when I'm saying that, you know, this is just in the, in the, in the way of gossiping or it's just in the way of, um, of knowing that some, that they're believing lies. Amen. I'm not talking about if someone has a genuine concern. I'm talking about when someone is gossiping, is sinning by gossiping and sinning by, by believing lies of Pharisees and speaking it. Amen. But still, you should do it with love and kindness. Amen? But for the most part, instead of correcting yourself, this is the issue where you report it to leadership. So it can be dealt with the proper way. Amen? And then prophesy. We are all called to prophesy, but we are not all called to prophesy directional words. We are called to prophesy for edification, for encouragement, but not to prophesy callings unless you're a fivefold minister and God is calling you to prophesy this. This can be extremely dangerous. Somebody can just have just just have been just has been delivered is has just come from Egypt on their way headed to the promised land like in the sh in the water in the shores and they're hearing the sounds of Egypt very loudly in their ear on their way fighting the good fight of faith headed to the promised land getting far from Egypt but at first they're close and when someone is to prophesy to, to a person who's just been delivered and they're just recently from Egypt and prophesy to them, you're called to be an apostle or you're called to be a prophet, this can be extremely dangerous for that person they are prophesying over. Why? Because the moment that someone says to a person, you're an apostle, you're a prophet, they can't help but be lifted, feel they've been lifted. And when you are lifted too soon, pride and selfish ambition take over. So if you're just from Egypt, you've just been delivered, you haven't been transformed and renewed in your mind yet, the devil is angry, you're free. The devil is saying, um, so many things from the past tempting you with. And then someone says you're an apostle, now or a prophet. Now the devil is flooding one's mind with pride and selfish ambition and distracting them from just being still and a disciple and a child in the kingdom and allowing God to grow them, mature them, mold their hearts for them to just be focused on being a servant, a servant heart, a child. Instead, they're like, I'm called to be an apostle, a prophet. I'm going to reach the world on a big platform. And that's where their mind is. Their mind is all there and not focused on being a servant and on learning and on being humble. 
This is very dangerous to prophesy out of order to, for the person that you are prophesying to. Prophesying to. Amen? That's why going out of order in this area is so wrong. That's why, because it's dangerous for the believers. Amen? You probably noticed here, I'm not prophesying all of these callings. Why? Because I'm walking with the wisdom of the Lord. It's not time yet for a person to receive their calling. Among all of you sitting here, among all of you watching, there are several apostles, several prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Some of you have been here for years, but it has not been time for you to receive that prophecy yet because God is so good in his perfect timing and knows when you will be able to handle this word, when you'll be able to handle this spiritual warfare that comes with that prophetic word. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. So you, you, when you're in the prophetic anointing, you're receiving impartation, it's prophetic. So you're, you, you, you might not even realize it, but you're walking in the prophetic. When you speak to people, as, you, as long as you're speaking with love, with the intention to encourage somebody and to be a vessel of God, you are prophesying. You are, you are releasing the prophetic anointing over them. But it should be in the realms of encouragement, not speaking directional things. God's telling me that you should be doing this. God's telling me that you should be doing this. God told me I need to be doing this to you right now. Even, even saying that is not good. God told me I needed to call you right now. God told me it's when you're doing that, it's like there's no doubt about it as if the audible voice of God spoke and that person is manipulated right now to hear the voice of God come from you. But if you're not anointed for that, that's wrong. That's out of order. We have to humble ourselves. We have to humble ourselves to what we are called to. We have to humble ourselves to we are in a process of being transformed into the image of Christ. God's not going to immediately anoint us to speak on his behalf to everybody. No. <laughs> we got to humble ourselves. Amen. So it's better to say, I feel the Holy Spirit leading me to maybe talk with you right now or something. That's okay. But you, you really, we really shouldn't be saying so much, God told me. Because of the harm it can do to others. Where with their humble heart, maybe they don't know any better. They haven't received this equipping I'm sharing with you right now. They're thinking a prophet speaking to them. They're thinking that, that God sent you like an angel to them right now. And so many believers, so many of us, we've all been wrong at hearing God's voice at one time. Because God says, when you seek me and seek me with all of your heart, then you'll find me. That includes hearing his voice, discerning his voice. It's a journey. It's a process. We don't all get it right immediately. God doesn't, purposely doesn't speak in an audible voice. He makes us be humble and seek him and not act professionals, calling ourselves prophets and acting above people. Amen. Hallelujah. So um, it's so important for all of you coming here in this end time revival in the new wine. It's so important for you to humble yourself and remember that you've come from so much old wine. You need to lay everything down for the sake of Jesus for the sake of this vision that he has brought for his end time revival, you have to lay down everything. He calls us to lay down everything for his sake. And that includes all of your knowledge you've accumulated about God and his kingdom. Because so much of it's been in the old wine. That's why you got to lay it down and just focus on being a disciple, a student, and learning this is every aspect of your relationship with God and your walk with God. Maybe you had so many visions, dreams in the past, 
but there was so much old wine that was teaching you uh, about dreams and visions. You know, who, for example, you could be trying to force dreams and visions to happen because the old wine teaching told you to force it or even force prophecy to happen. Forcing prophecy, oh, I want to see something about this person and I want to speak to them. Even you're doing it in a good intention, like I really want to encourage someone prophetically. Give me a word for them, Lord. It doesn't work that way. And so it can be in the old wine, these are some of the old wine ways I'm talking about. Oh God, I want to receive dreams from you every night. I want to receive dreams from you every night. But if you're doing it in, area of, in a way of forcing, it's opening the door for the enemy to send you dreams coming as the angel of light. Same with visions and same with prophecy. And that's why it's, it's, we're strict here in the, in, the, in the way of keeping people safe in terms of prophecy. Because there's been so much old wine where uh, ways of prophesying and so doors have been opened of the angel of light. And I have, you have to be protected that you're not going to re be receiving prophecies from the angel of light. The devil masquerading himself as the angel of light. Amen? And it's just not necessary for everybody at one time to be di getting directional prophecies all the time. You're getting the direction, the prophetic direction and equipping you need in the teaching. Apply it to your life, to your personal life. Amen? And in the word of God that you read daily, apply it to your life. Don't have these itching ears for your personal prophecies. Don't have itching ears for visions and dreams. Let God give you a vision if and when he wants to give you a vision. Let God give you dreams when he wants to give you dreams. Let God speak through somebody prophetically when he wants to. And let God speak to you prophetically when he wants to, in order. Hallelujah. So you need to lay that all down. You've been having many visions, many dreams in the past and the old wine. But you're here in the new wine and the end time revival with a new vision. Lay it down. Don't be saying to somebody, I had this vision, this dream, and da 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 when, when you, you just brought it from the old wine and it's not helping the person. Amen? Hallelujah. So I've been, I've been teaching you now how, how to not fall prey to the enemy trying to work through people coming as an angel of light in the church, how to have wisdom and discernment and guard your heart. Amen. So what I've been sharing firstly right now has been to not have itching ears, but to be patient and focused on learning, growing, lay down your vision. Amen. Now the second the second key I'm going to share with you of how to not be deceived um, and, and by, by the angel of light working through people in the church um, is do not tolerate manipulation. You should not be tolerating it. You should see, whenever you see any kind of manipulation, this is a huge red flag. God gives us free will. He is as far away from manipulation as it gets because of the free will he gives us, the gentleness he comes in. He says, seek me and you'll find me. <laughs> Opposite of manip manipulating. And so we, as his children, as his representatives, must be the same way. So if we operate oppositely of God in the area of free will, that means you're operating by, like the enemy, influenced by the enemy. Manipulation is coming from the enemy. So if ever you're seen in anybody, they're trying to manipulate you to do something, to see them a certain way, to get their way, you need 
to know this is a red flag. You need to know this is the enemy influencing this person right now. You need to to go, wait a second. No matter your past where people, you were a people pleaser, you have to take this seriously. Hold it. I'm not going to allow myself to give in to manipulation even 1% because that's stepping outside of God's will and giving in to the devil what he wanted to do, allowing it to happen. That's what's happening when you give in to manipulation. It's disobedience to God. People-pleasing is disobedience to God. And you got to really get this in your head because people act like they, a way of manipulation is emotional manipulation. Where they act like you're rejecting them or you're not being loving towards them. Don't be fooled. You know when manipulation is manipulation. Don't be fooled. Don't allow it to happen. Amen? Amen. Don't let them get into your emotions. This is a choice. So Paul actually says, if I were trying to please people, I actually wouldn't be serving God. So get that in your mind. Allowing yourself to be manipulated equals disobeying God. This will help you be strong. If you've, if you've been manipulated in the past easily, if you gave into people pleasing easily in the past, you need to be really on guard because the enemy knows this. It's up to you to stop this pattern, to make the choice, to stop it. Be strong. Hallelujah. Okay, so I am going to be giving examples of manipulation so you can be aware of them. Amen? One example is if someone were to say to you, God said, God told me you are called to be the one who serves me, like Jonathan. And you are the one that's going to help me Fulfill my calling. Or maybe they don't say it in that words, but if they say Jonathan, Jonathan was serving David. I always give the example of Jeantal, but she is my spiritual daughter. She's truly helping serve me to, so we can, so to help me do the work of God. But it's prideful to think that someone is supposed to serve you. When you are not called to be an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, or leader of a ministry. Another thing um, that is, a, is a, uh, an example. God said you're supposed to be the chosen one that I bring close. And this can come in a flattering way. But you need to recognize when you're not given the choice. So there will, be, there will be friendships that God ordains where you both know, yes, God is calling us to bring each other close. But, but you shouldn't put yourself above another person and say, God said this. God said you're the one to bring close. Because it's not giving the other person a choice. And it's manipulating that person to think that they have to do this that you're a prophet or something. And that you'll be disobeying God if you don't do it because they said God said this. That's why it's dangerous, amen? Another example of manipulation is if someone starts calling you all of the time, but it's just one-sided and it's done in a way to like a take control way to to mentor you that's out of order amen 
So you need to not feel guilty about putting boundaries. You need to know what's wrong, what's out of order, and unashamedly say no. Put boundaries up. Saying no is saying yes to God. Saying no to what God's telling you to say no to is saying yes to God. And if you don't say no, you're saying no to God. So it's serious. So many times we're taking things so casual, but this is serious what I'm sharing. Amen? Also, if you start feeling like someone is your mentor, but you never made them your mentor, you have a spiritual father, you have a spiritual mother already, but the way this person has portrayed them, the way that they are acting, the way they speak to you, you get this feeling as if this person is your mentor. That is manipulation. Remember last week I said you need to write down these things. You need to listen again and write down these things because I'm going over one by one practical situations. This is what we're getting to now. So here's another reminder that make sure you listen to this again and take notes. It's going to help you in the future. Amen. Here's another example of manipulation. Someone should never be, I'm talking about believers here, believers in the church. No one should ever separate themselves from you, put themselves above you. They shouldn't be bragging about their anointing and their giftings. And this, and this doesn't have to mean just like, look at how God's using me. But in their actions, you can tell when there's a bragging happening, there's pride there. There's a wanting people to see. Amen? So be aware that this is manipulation and this is out of order. Beware that this is manipulation because what the scheme of the enemy is to try to get you to start seeing this person as a leader when they're not called to be your leader so that the devil can lead you astray. So the devil will, will try to do this emotional manipulation thing where it's like subtle, subtly you start to see someone as a leader by how they are portraying themselves and the actions they're taking. Also, Another example of manipulation is when someone is making you feel guilty for not doing enough for God. Amen. We should inspire others. We should inspire others to be the light, to serve God more. Iron sharpening iron. We can all do that. We should all inspire each other. We all have different strengths. Maybe your strength is patience and your friend, that's their weakness. But your friend's strength is, is, is hard work and excellence for God. And that's not your strength. So iron sharpen iron. We can all sharpen each other. Right? But when you're really humble, humbly serving God, really you should just be bringing inspiration to others. You should, rather than making people feel guilty. I shared in my message, and this is another message. I know last Sunday I shared a lot of messages that are important for you to go back on because it's kind of, it's, I'll put it all in the playlist about order in the kingdom of God, I believe, because it's like a really in-depth series about order in the kingdom. But one of them is, I, I taught on Ju in June, order, or uh, sorry, purity in the church from lukewarm to mature disciple. Amen. Um, and yeah, and this one I taught so much in, in this wisdom, in this area. Hallelujah. And so... I shared in that message about how when, you, when you're not pure in your heart and you're acting as a leader to someone, what's coming out of your heart is not pure. It's polluted. But when there's pure teaching and pure leadership, it's, it's stuff that's being released. Specifically, the stuff is anointing. <laughs> 
it's being released. Not just the words, but the, what's inside of me is being released. So it, it should be, when it's coming from the leader, you know, into leader, nothing but pure. Pure, 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 pure. So, like, here's an example of something that's not pure. When a, per, when a leader, if a leader were to carry judgment in their heart, and they get up on the pulpit and they start speaking, oh, you see, all these people doing so much evil in this world. We need to go on the streets and we need to scream, repent, you know, or they speak in that kind of way. Maybe they don't say that exact words, but, you know, they carry judgment in their heart and it comes out. And so there's things that happen to the person. They receive judgment themselves and they start being judgmental themselves. It's like a heaviness even they receive. They start looking for the bad. They start seeing so much darkness in the world instead of focusing on being the light. Right? That's an example. So, if someone is talking about how they're doing so much for God, or if they're posting so many uh, testimonies or en encounters that they're having with God, but it's, it's done in a way to point people to themselves and not in a pure way, then th the things that are being released are not pure. So what can happen is you can start, it's like a scheme of the enemy to bring, specifically to bring insecurity to you that you're not doing enough for God. So that's why you got to be on guard if you start seeing someone, um, if you start finding that as someone specifically you feel insecure, like you're not doing enough for God. Be aware. Be aware. Why are you looking at that person as the example? Why are you looking at this person? This person is doing so many things. I don't think I'm doing enough. But were they called to be your leader? Why are you looking at them as an example? So all of this insecurity feeling, whatever, that's, that's, the, that's the result of you looking at them in the wrong way as a leader. Amen? I'll give an example of Chantal. Like, I, I don't see Chantal bragging about her anointing you know, and her giftings and sharing a bunch of testimonies about her life, making kind of her own ministry. I don't see that. And so she's someone that's trustworthy to look at as like an example of someone who follows your leader. So don't look at someone randomly as an example of what it looks like to follow a leader. You see what I mean? Amen. Amen. So, it says in John 10, 27, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 says, you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. NIV says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. So Paul's saying, follow my example as I follow Christ. It's so important you're not look, putting your eyes to other people and looking at their example to follow. What will, what will keep you from not being deceived by the angel of light working through people is to stay focused on listening to the shepherd's voice and not other voices, your leader's teachings and how they act their example, and to keep looking at your leader as the example and the one to imitate and not getting distracted with other people, even if they're trying to push, push themselves in your face. Amen? So um, here's an example. When I... Um, when I, whenever I teach here, 
those of you that have been here for years, you know that I teach the importance of being gentle and kind. And, and, and I, I, I hope that when I teach and correction comes, it comes with love. That's what God's directed me to do, and that's what I hope I have done. So I, 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 what I hope and what I believe is that whenever I teach sharp, correctional teachings, you're never feeling condemned. Because I'm teaching with love and gentleness. And that's how the correction from God should come. Because there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? So every time you leave on a Sunday, even if it was the most meaty, direct, correctional word that was like, after that you're like, I need to fully repent so many areas of my life. Even in that kind of teaching, I hope you are leaving. You should be leaving feeling lighter than when you came. Feeling the love of God. Feeling grateful for God for this correction because it came with love and feeling joy and peace. That's how you should feel when correction comes. <laughs> Amen. So if someone were to randomly reach out to you and say, do not do this, does your leader correct in that way? Therefore, the correction was wrong. Even if there's somehow some truth to it, you're not supposed to take it from that person. So don't let that word of mean correction bring, bring condemnation to you. Don't let it in. Don't let the word in. Don't let it bring insecurity. Don't let you have to be diligent. Aware of the enemy's schemes. Be on guard. My leader does not correct like this. This person, first of all, has corrected out of order, so I already know that this is wrong. I'm not supposed to be getting correction from this person. Number two, it was not how my leader corrects. It was not with love. Therefore, I reject it. I'm not going to receive that. I'm not going to receive that so that the devil can start bringing all these lies of condemnation and insecurity because I received that word. Because I gave authority to the devil to bring all these lies to me. Amen? Also, um, I don't know if you notice when I minister. I hope you're watching when I minister. You should be watching and learning. Because when I pray for people, when I interact with them, when I speak with them, this is time for you to learn and, 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 and follow the example how I'm interacting with people and showing them love and gentleness and kindness. For example, sometimes maybe a, a, a person comes in wearing an evil eye necklace. Instead of saying, take that necklace off. Those of you that don't know, don't know uh, evil eye is, is, a new, is a new age. It's from the enemy. It, it, it really can be an open door for the enemy. So the things we wear, the jewelry, it should not be representing gods or like pagan gods or things from the enemy or witchcraft amen but instead i was, the holy spirit may lead me to speak with them for one maybe is there anything you want to renounce or maybe he'll god the god will lead me to speak with them as you close doors to new age in every area the full freedom will come amen So you need to be watching your leader so you know what's right and what's wrong. Amen? Also, um, I've taught this many times. I teach this many times in my subscriber Q&A as well. Do I ever say, report to me all of the demons you've cast out this week? Do I ever say you should, be, you should be sharing testimonies on your page of the impartation you received and the people that have been delivered because you prayed for them? So 
I actually have taught many times, if you've been here, some of you are new, but I, many of you know this. I teach about the power of planting seeds. The power of just being the light. The power of your smile to somebody. The power of showing love with your words. The power of keeping silent when someone is mean to you and not lashing back at them. Most of the times when I'm teaching you all um, of what your daily life should look like ministering-wise, I'm not telling you you should make sure you're getting all these people saying the sinner's prayer, casting many demons out of them, and healing the sick. Go, go out on the streets and all of y'all do this every day. I'm not saying that, am I? I'm telling you, go into your workplace and be the light. And don't, and don't feel this pressure like you have to get somebody to say the sinner's prayer. You need to move gently with the Holy Spirit. Like sometimes people are not open and we can't force free will. But you just showing them love is planting seeds. Because they follow you on social media and they see you sharing about church and Jesus. And it's planting massive seeds. That as you go gently planting these seeds, that's going to lead to a harvest someday. Whether it's with you, they give their life to Jesus and they receive deliverance through you or somebody else. Or they come to the church and receive it. Amen? So that's what I teach many times. So, for example, if someone is posting online all the time or sharing these testimonies, look at all these people I healed, all these people I delivered, all these people that got saved, all these people, whatever, whatever. You should never feel insecure about that. that. I mean, that you're not doing enough for God. When that's not what I teach equals doing what you're supposed to be doing for God. You won't be confused. You won't let the devil's lies in of insecurity if you'll stay focused on hearing the shepherd's voice and imitating your leader as they imitate Christ. You'll know right away, oh, that's wrong. That's not my, I know, I only listen to my shepherd's voice. That's not the shepherd's voice. That's not my shepherd's example. So I look away. I don't take those words in. Moving on. Amen? Also, um, just this, this applies to everything. If someone does something to you, speaks something to you, and they're here at 5F Church, you know, people, people, and if, you're, if you don't go to 5F Church, this applies to every church. People can choose to be a stone in a river or a sponge. The sponge is humble, teachable, and is able to soak in the anointing, the new wine, the teaching, and transform. And be soaked with the anointing. And look like Jesus, the anointed one. They're soaked. But a stone, when you cut it in the middle, it's dry. So it's fully immersed in the water, but it's dry on the inside. So you can choose to be like a stone by not humbling yourself. And you can choose to never grow. So you have got to be aware of that, of the people in the church. Some are going to be stones. Some are going to be Judases. You know, Judas, if it happened to Jesus, it will definitely happen to us. That was Judas' choice, though. Amen? So you got to be aware of that. you got to be aware of that. That just because someone has been here for years, it doesn't mean that they're professionals in the spiritual things. It doesn't mean they're going to be carrying the spiritual truths. Amen? So this is every action or word that somebody in the church says to you or does to you. So, okay, if someone, none of you see me, all sorts of people I pray for. Some people coming from the street. Some people having all sorts of things going on. I'm never going far away from them, am I? I'm coming close. I'm showing them love. I'm not putting myself as above them. I'm here to serve them. I'm not saying my anointing's so great and I don't want you to take away my anointing or hurt me or something. Right? There's sometimes when a child or a person may hug me because they're so grateful for the anointing that God released through me and they're set free. 
They're grateful for my obedience, glory to God. And they're just so overcome with joy, they just want to hug. Do I push them away? No. So if someone were to come up to you and, and say, I can't hug you because of anointing in me, do, does your leader do that? So you should know to not take this personally, to know this is not right, to just move on. That was wrong. It was strange. I don't know. Move on. Don't let it hurt. Because if you don't do that, you'll, you'll let it hurt you. You'll let it affect you. You'll think something's wrong with you. You'll think you're dirty. All the lies of the enemy can come in. Amen. Hallelujah. So lastly, I want, I want to now share the importance I shared with you that even with Jesus, Jesus, Judas was there. He was among the 12. And he just made the choice to disobey God. So it's so important to know that in the church, this is for every church, in the church and in those who serve at the church, and those who have positions doing certain things, operating in the church, they have free will. The devil tempts, and he comes and tempts at different times in everybody's lives, and we all have free will. We all have a choice if we'll reject him or not. Amen. Now, there's a shift between when, before Jesus was crucified, and resurrected and released his spirit and his anointing upon the apostles. There's a difference between then, before, and after. Before that took place, we have Judas, who betrayed. We have Peter, who wasn't fully transformed yet into God's image. And one time, the devil spoke through him. Peter. Jesus said to him, when after Jesus was, was sharing that he's going to be crucified, Peter says, no, that will never happen. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, to Peter. Right? So Peter wasn't fully transformed yet. So he was used by the enemy at one time. Was that Jesus doing something wrong? No. Was that Jesus making a mistake for choosing to bring him in close and put him in a place of a position, helping serve in the work of God? No, right? But there's a difference after Peter was ready and anointed to be an apostle. We never see him being used by the enemy. We only see him being obedient to God, being trustworthy. Amen. Amen. And so it's important you have this understanding in the church so that you're not blaming leaders, blaming the church, and letting the devil put bitterness in your heart, put hurt in your heart, and lead you out of the church. So when, when truly anointed ministers are anointed, I'm talking about when the anointing's present, when there's prophetic anointing, where there's true purity in hearts. Once they are anointed as ministers, they are in a place of, of where you can trust them, being trustworthy. But when people are serving in the church and they're not yet anointed yet to be fivefold ministers, or maybe that's not their calling even, you're not supposed to look at them with all trust. You're supposed to look at them like Peter, who was used by the enemy one time. You know? So it's important that just because someone's serving at the church, do not place them at the same level as trust as your shepherd. Do not have in your mind, oh, because they help out. They serve. This means that the leader trusts them fully. 
Amen? Hallelujah. So, so that, that being said, it's so important you're not, you're not blaming the leader. You're not blaming uh, uh, ministers, a church for a church hurt that has happened. When God doesn't tell us to immediately remove the wolves, he doesn't tell us to immediately remove out of the church people who have sinned. He tells us to extend grace upon grace to them. Forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive again. He leads us in Matthew 18 in a process of what to do with these situations when sin is repeating. Amen? So be, just because there is one fallen pastor doesn't make all pastors bad, right? Just because the, you had one bad encounter with one person who, who hurt you, who did something wrong to you in the church, doesn't mean that everybody in the church is that way, right? So don't let the devil lie to you because we need the church. We need to be planted. We, we, we need each other. We need, you need the, the anointing and equipping and the protection that comes with being planted. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I thank the Lord for what he has done today. Because I see in the spiritual realm, your spiritual eyes have, have opened up wide. You've been given wisdom that you didn't have before, that you need to keep you in God's will, to keep your heart safe. Amen. You have the job to guard your heart. That's your job. And a big part of guarding your heart is taking the teaching seriously, the wisdom I release to you seriously. It's up to you now in your day-to-day -day situations, your interactions with people to guard your heart, to recognize right from wrong, bad fruit from good fruit. This is God's voice. This is not God's voice. And so you can be able to reject every sneaky scheme of the devil, every lie that's attempt to bring hurt to you, harm to you, confusion to you, lead you astray from where God wants you planted, whatever God's, the devil's scheme is, that you can reject it. So the devil can't do a darn thing to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Right now, God is bringing more healing to hearts, mending hearts from ways you've been hurt in the past. God began a great work last Sunday, and God is continuing it now today. I know some of you with what was released today in the message time from beginning to end, you know now it's time for the healing. I see spiritually there were ways you were deceived and, and it brought harm, it brought confusion. And now God has opened up your eyes in the ways you were deceived or led astray. Praise God for this, amen. Thank you, Jesus, for your word and for leading people back into your will. Thank you, Jesus. And so now it's time for healing in the heart of ways that you've been hurt by others, of ways that you've been hurt in the church by people, of ways you've been hurt in the past, in previous churches. Any kind of way hurt came to you from other people, confusion. God is bringing healing right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you need this right now, just lift your hands to God. If you need this healing right now, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I declare right now that anything impure that was released to you 
from people with wrong motives, with pride. I declare that to come out of you now, all of that impurity in Jesus' name, all of the wrong doctrine, all of the wrong prophecy, let it come out now in Jesus' name. And all of the confusion that it brought, let it come out in Jesus' name. All of the pride and selfish ambition that came from people prophesying to you wrongly, may this come out now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever way the devil disguised himself as an angel of light and brought the wrong things to you in your heart and your mind, I declare it to come out of every person now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I declare now this anointing to come upon you all. And I declare healing in your heart from all past hurt, past church hurt, from ways that you were betrayed, from ways that people had deceived you, led you astray from ways that people spoke to you and it made you farther away from God because they misrepresented God. Where insecurity came and a lack of fire and love for God came, I declare healing in your heart now in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed. Let all the heaviness lift off of you now in Jesus' name. Be free from this past hurt now. And every spirit of manipulation must go in Jesus' name. There's some of you that God is leading you to renounce wrong soul ties. These soul ties can be formed just by giving into manipulation. So if someone inserted themselves, portrayed themselves as a leader in your life that God did not want to be a leader, but you listened to their words, you kept accepting the phone calls, and you, you know, that is the action of giving into the manipulation. So that can actually bring in the spiritual realm a soul tie. Even if you haven't actually spoken the words, this person is my mentor, so right now, God is asking, leading you to renounce certain soul ties from people in the past that were wrong soul ties, wrong relationships. There's some people you have such a, a people-pleasing people feeling towards, but it's only this one person or two people. You, otherwise, you don't care what people think about you. You just care to be in God's will. But these people... You feel such a pull to please them and have their approval. That is a wrong soul tie. So God is asking you to renounce this. Even if it's in the past, you need to be let go of things, relationships way in the past. Years ago, someone who wasn't supposed to be your leader... You need to renounce these soul ties. Some of you, they're hanging on still. It's like old wine keeps coming to you still through that tie. It's like you're unable to let go the old wine because of this tie. I break every demonic soul tie now in Jesus' name. And I declare every spirit of witchcraft that has come from this demonic soul tie, every controlling spirit must leave now in Jesus' name. Be free. No one is controlling you from now. Nobody should be controlling you in Jesus' name. God is your only master. From now, you shall only please God. Seek to please God. Just confess this right now. If you've, if you've struggled with this in the past, people pleasing, confess this. Confess this to God. 
Say, I will only seek to please you, Lord. I will not be controlled by any person again. I will not allow manipulation to happen again. I will put up boundaries as you lead me. I will not take in just any word from anybody. I will guard my heart. I will protect my peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I declare this for every person and every person watching online. I declare that any way anybody was harmed by people coming in a wrong way and doing wrong actions, I declare it to be wiped away from you. And I speak total healing in you now. In Jesus' name. For those of you that felt like you weren't doing enough for God, I say to you, the word of the Lord now, God is proud of you. He is pleased with you. The light you shine is precious and is powerful. The way you treat people with love touches God's heart. Receive his acceptance and pride over you now. Be confident in his approval over you now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you who have lived with insecurity of, 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 of being out of God's will. Some of this happened from people correcting you wrongly. Be free of this now. I say the word of the Lord to you now, overriding every lie of the devil, that God directs the steps of the righteous. Meaning when you earnestly, with a humble heart, Surrender your life to God. And with each day, you earnestly from your heart try your best to be obedient to God every day. You cannot help but be in his will. God directs the steps of the righteous. This insecurity and fear of being out of his will must go. For those of you who have pride in your heart, you need to have the fear of God. If you're keeping pride in your heart without renouncing, confessing, rejecting it, repenting, you are out of God's will. And I share this as a warning. Let the fear of God come on you. But those of you who are earnestly humble, earnestly seeking God every day, wanting nothing more but to be in his will, be free of this insecurity and fear. God wants you to be in his will more than you want to be in his will. And he is a good father to guide you perfectly. Your steps are directed by the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From now, walk in confidence. I'm in God's will. I'm safe because I'm in God's will. I'm moving forward because I'm in God's will. I'm pleasing God. I'm touching my father's heart because I'm in his will. I'm fulfilling my purpose on this earth because I'm in God's will. This is how God wants you to walk this this mindset, this is the joy of the Lord. Walk in this truth. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and the Lord is saying, you're in a safe place. You're in my anointed church. With a true anointed apostle, with true prophetic anointing, whose spiritual father is a prophet, high-level prophet in the body of Christ. You are safe. You are getting the prophetic direction you need. You are getting the food you need. All you have to do is be a good disciple and stay surrendered. And there's nothing you have to fear. I will guide you perfectly in my will every day, the Lord is saying. Receive this peace of being safe in God's will. Receive his peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive his peace. I see a turning point from today that you would walk in peace and joy and confidence, godly confidence like never before, with this certainty that you were in God's hands. You were safe. You're in his will. You're fulfilling his purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's some of you who God's calling to repent right now of pride, of calling yourself a, a calling that didn't, God didn't call you to do that. So if that's you, repent of pride, repent of any pride. Thank you, Jesus. Just speak to God and surrender. Thank you, Jesus. I declare from now that every hunting spirit of pride coming in your mind so many times, the pride thoughts, the selfish ambition thoughts must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. May nothing hold you back from walking humbly with God from now in Jesus' name and walking in truth. Amen.